there's always something new you learn about bees. Some things are unexpected. Did you know that drone honeybees, which are the males, cannot sting? Did you know that most of the bees that you see on flowers, 99.999% are female? There's no limit in terms of what I can learn from honeybees. How does that work? Well, how does this happen? Wait, how does that work? And just, you know, just being that curious, just keep getting more curious. All of these bees are working together towards like one productive end um, and understanding kind of how they're doing that, what's happening in a way that like we totally don't understand. There's a, a lot of things that are happening that we can't see, um, a lot of things that are happening that we don't even really know about. the only apiculture program in the state of Texas. For as large as the state is, there are other people that study some aspects of honeybee biology in other universities, but we are the apiculture program at a and Some people have to keep their bees um, in a field and then put a shed next to it or share the facility with other researchers. And we don't have to do that. We're really, we're really privileged. You don't think about bees when you're, you know, eating dinner, um, but bees have been really integral to, to your dinner, to your breakfast, to every meal that you eat, bees are kind of there in the background. It has been estimated that um, honeybees provide about $16 billion annually to the U.S. economy, primarily through the pollination of major agricultural crops the mere importance of uh, maintaining ecological balance and conservation of uh, biodiversity. Honeybees are incredibly important. We're in an important moment in the history of beekeeping. The varroa mite is the number one problem in apiculture today. Um, it attacks the bees. It feeds off of some of its body tissue, but it also transmits several dozen honeybee-associated viruses. In the last three, four decades, we've been just trying to play catch-up, trying to find innovative ways to get rid of the varroa mite. Understanding its biology will help us better uh, protect the, the honeybee. The varroa mites are ectoparasitic mites on honeybees, and so they are pretty big. They feed on the honeybees. Um, and so if it was like parasitizing me, it'd be the size of a big basketball on me. It's almost in every colony in the United States. And we have roughly 2.8, probably 3 million colonies um, in the United States. And I would say that nearly all of them have some level of varroa mite infestation. Pre-varroa mites, there's tons of studies that have shown there have been, you know, low levels of viruses present in honeybee colonies. But after these varroa mites were introduced, um, the viral levels in honeybee colonies has just skyrocketed. We have chemical protections, but we use them so frequently that resistance has evolved quite quickly by the varroa mites. You can imagine that if you have a ton of stressors in a colony, a ton of bees leaving the colony early, they're dying in the field. Then even younger bees are having to age up to take on this role because they need foragers. This could lead to basically the symptoms of um, a colony collapsing because you lose just the entire adult population. Hopefully by kind of looking at these actual evolved responses um, in, in other honeybees, we can kind of apply that to our honeybees in a way that could be over time sustainable. We have gotten to a point where we have sufficient knowledge about this devastating parasite that we are doing better at controlling it. We do have some in high treatment options and some beekeeping practices that we can use to help keep varroa mites at bay, but it's um, a continual fight. And so that's probably the one of the biggest things that a lot of beekeepers are concerned about is the level of parasites that are in their colony. Over the next 10 years, we're going to find different chemistries and treatment options that will help us improve our odds in combating the varroa mite, plus other um, pathogens that, that we have attacking the honeybee. 
One of the, my favorite parts of my job is to train the next generation of scientists, um, especially honeybee scientists. Having different people from different backgrounds come together helps improve the number of questions and the diversity of answers that we could um, provide to these scientific inquiries. The first summer, you know, I was just kind of thrown into it and had to learn um, pretty quickly. And, and I was just amazed at what I didn't know and what the insects are capable of doing. It actually just kind of like fed into this new interest and new curiosity about bees. At the end of the semester, I asked them, what did you learn? Like, did your perception change? And a lot of them are like, well, I'm not as scared as I used to be. Um, so that's good. Uh, but also they're like, I was just unaware of how much that we can learn about bees.